prayers, and I really appreciate the, that's going to be helping with the prayer. Uh, we're going to be doing the opening directions first, and um, we will start it. Yes, so if everybody could turn to the east. To the east, we call Gawalito Apu, the warrior creator, where the sun comes up and brings us that first light of day and, and starts our day in a good way. Thank you, Nawalito Apu. Bateo Shahao, Bateo Shupa. Then we go into the west, we want church the west. And this is Abuelito Kebe. Kebe is our ancestors. It is where we are born and where we die is where the sun goes down. Thank you, Abuelito Kebe, for always watching after us, our ancestors, our forefathers, our grandparents, our parents who have passed on, those babies who have passed away as well. Abuelito Keme, beautiful Keme, thank you for being with us, always giving us guidance that we need into the days that we follow. Thank you for allowing us to rest and be at peace. Abuelito Keme, gracias. Everybody can turn to the south. To the south, we call in Abuelito Khan, the serpent energy the movement of, of life and all of the children that are that are springing up in the, the springtime. Gracias, Nawalito Khan. Now we go to the north. Into the north, Abuelito It is the breath of God. It is the air of God. It is the wind that blows so freely. As we breathe in and out, we have the life of God within us. We don't believe in God because we feel God with every breath we take in and out. We are a part of God. Without air, we do not live. Avalito ik. Thank you, Avalito ik. And now we go into the center. Oh, we want to thank Father Sky. Thank you, Father Sky, for being with us for loving us, for guiding us, always, always being with us. And as we go to the earth, I can't bend down, <laughs> but uh, Abuelita, who is the earth mother, thank you for giving us the water, the earth, the grain, everything is through um, the earth. Thank you for giving us what we need to be able to survive. Thank you for giving us given us everything to be able to be um, able to live, walk, and cherish our Earth Mother. Thank you for being with us. So thank you for coming with us as we celebrate this time of art, of uh, our teachers, of everything that we do. It of the Mexica, of the um, the warriors, of the Aztec warriors, but also of the Maya and uh, the Peruvian, all of the indigenous people of the colony of the Americas. So the all the way from the south, all the way to the north, and all of us who represent each one of um, our indigenous people and all of our teachers that we've had throughout time, space, and dimensions. Thank you for blessing this day and uh, this show that we have going on. And may it be totally blessed and all the artwork here sell. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God Supreme of the Aztec people. I am Smoking Mirror. I am the Supreme Divinity. The Aztec emperors prayed to me, Tezcatlipoca. I am the jaguar. I am he who is all around us. I am he who is invisible. I am the god of justice and fate, beneficial and destructive. I am the god of darkness, power, in wisdom, 
I've just got me polka. Smoking mirror. At the beginning of time and space, the creator pair gave birth to two gods. I was the firstborn, smoking mirror of Tezcatlipoca. The second god born was Quetzalcoatl. The history of this earth of ours is determined by the eons long battle between myself and my brother, Quetzalcoatl. My people have a melancholy soul, energized by the belief that we are the chosen people that will give life to this earth. At the beginning of time and space, at the time of the first sun, the earth was empty and void. It was my duty to bring the sun on its daily journey. This was the time of one jaguar. However, during this time, my brother Quetzalcoatl was jealous that I had been chosen for this honor. And he came up and he struck a mighty blow. And I fell down to the earth. And the earth at this time was populated by giants. And as I fell down, I became my spirit animal, the jaguar. And as I destroyed the first earth, the first sun, death came to this earth. Now Quetzalcoatl reigned supreme. And it was his sacred calling to take the sun on his daily journey through the sky. However, this could not stand with me. I went up and struck him a mighty blow, and he came raining down. This was the era of the second sun, the era of one wind. The earth was destroyed by a mighty wind, and the second time the earth came to an end. The gods were weary of this battle between Quetzalcoatl and myself, Tezcatlipoca. And they gave the honor of carrying the sun on his daily journey to the god of rain, Tlaloc. Quetzalcoatl and myself could not stand this. We went up to the skies and struck a mighty blow and brought down Tlaloc. And a rain of fire came down on this earth. And for the third time, the earth was destroyed. The God still would not allow Quetzalcoatl and myself the honor of taking the sun on his daily journey. They gave a God, the God of jade skirt, the God of water, the honor of carrying the sun on his daily journey. Once again, Quetzalcoatl and myself would not bear this for one moment. We struck her down, and as she came down, the earth was destroyed for the fourth time in flood and water. The earth was empty and void. People had died. The creatures of the earth had died. Because of this great flood, however, the earth was covered in water. And in the depths of that water was an earth monster. <laughs> Quetzalcoatl and myself transformed ourselves into two great serpents. And we went down and we tore that earth monster asunder. And then the gods took all of her parts and created the earth that we live in now. They took her spiny back and created the mountains. They took her hair and created the forest. They took her eyes and created the ponds and the water. They took her blood and her soul and created the waters that envelop our earth. But still the earth was dark and a sun and a moon had to be created. And what happened was this, the gods made a roaring fire and they invited 
for it was brave enough, courageous enough, and heard the calling and spirit of life to create the sun by sacrificing themselves in the fire. One guy, haughty, arrogant, wealthy, said, this is a calling for me. I will jump into the fire, sacrifice myself, and give birth to the fifth son, the era that we live in now. As he approached the blazing fire, the heat of it singed him, and his true nature was revealed. He was afraid. And he backed up. Another God, Nanahuatzin, humble, poor, but clean of spirit, called upon himself to jump into the fire. He jumped in the fire. The minute he jumped in the fire, a flame rose up, and out of that flame came the fifth son, the era that we live in now. That proud, hunting God who faltered at the moment of courage, he was ashamed and redeem himself, he jumped into the fire. Now there are two mighty suns in the sky. The gods could not stand this. They said there can only be one sun in the sky. The second one must be a smaller light. And they took a rabbit, hit it on the face, and it transformed itself into the moon. That is why one of the great legends of the Aztec people is if you look at the moon on an especially clear night, you will see the image of a rabbit smacked into the surface of the moon. The earth had been formed. The mountains had been formed. The waters were flowing. The fifth sun was in the air. The moon followed it on its daily celestial trip through the sky. But the earth was devoid of people. Quetzalcoatl went down to the land of darkness, the land of Miklan, and he addressed the God of the land of the dead, Miklantikuti. And he said, I've come for the bones of all those who have died in the first versions of the earth to bring them to life again. For now that we're in the fifth sun, let me have those sacred bones. Miklantikuti knew that Quetzalcoatl was wise and somewhat of a trickster. It could not be trusted. So he said, you shall not have those bones unless you fulfill my request. Now Quetzalcoatl knew that this request would be impossible and that he would need the assistance of the creatures of the natural world. And so what this was the quest Miklan Tekutli gave him a shell from the depths of the ocean. And he says, you shall blow this four times. And when you have blown it four times, the bones will be yours. So Quetzalcoatl blew once. But he could tell that something was wrong. And when he looked more closely, he'd seen that Big Lante Kudli had tricked him. And it was jammed shut. And he called upon the creatures of the earth. First the worms. The worms came and cleared out. Then the bees came and cleared out. And for the fourth and third time, was starting to make the sound that was determined. And at the sound of the conch shell, the bones came to life. But Quetzalcoatl wanted eternal life for the people of the earth. But Miklankekutli would not allow this. And as Quetzalcoatl was leaving with those sacred bones, the people that made us, he tripped and all the bones fell on the ground and they broke into a myriad number of pieces of different sizes. And that's why when I look upon my people today, I see people of all different sizes. But the worst thing Quetzalcoatl did was he sent birds that pecked at the bones and made him fragile and weak. And that is why to this day, all of us 
Some of us sooner than others, however, will be called by Miklantekutli down to the land of the dead. The sacred poetry of the Aztec emperors express this melancholy feeling about our final journey as we leave this great earth. It is not true, no, it is not true that we came to this earth to live. We came to this earth to dream. We pass this way but once. Oh, if I should not die, if I should taste the victory of eternal life, but we pass this way but once. If it is made of jade, it shall be broken. If it is made of gold, it shall be destroyed. If it is made of sacred plume, it shall shred. We pass this way but once. For a short time, we wander intoxicated. It is not true that we came to this life to live. We came to this life to dream. I'm Texcatli Polka, smoking mirror, Lord God Supreme at the Aztec people. Cuando se pan y pan, pan, pan. 
read them. That's out for me. The scholars are poets. So he deserves a poem. <laughs> the beautiful fez that sings over the flowers I offer you. I praise the one who is revered for his poetic magic. You will hear your gift of poetic, of lyric poetry that covers a city like a bellowing cloud that spreads over people you care for. I offer you the red flower from Tamakutakan, also gold and polished jade. I offer to you to paint the, their poet's hard red macaw and the colors of precious emeralds. I offer you the peace. The peace comes from my heart, a heart full of passion. I come from you from the ocean dyed in blue shades. My labor for you is not in vain. I rejoice with my friends with song. I am like a fragile flower that spreads its, its petals in the morning light, covered with dew and golden tints. For you, the poet king, I will dress in white plumes and sacrifice his body to the earth. I will pray to the four directions and to each way the wind blows. My prayers for you will reach the top of the sky as well as the body of the earth. Please show yourself to me, Nasadkuka Koryote. Remove your mask and let the sun's ray warm your face as we feel the earth shatter and tremble because of your mighty power and skill. And thank you. want to sing on the Tonansin part. Tonansin means our beloved mother. So Nansin, so and that's mother earth. Oh Nansin, Tonansin, darkness. You must protect yourself. And the young man thought, I will find the most ferocious beast and he will be my constant companion and protect me from whatever danger. The old man shook his head again and instead 
offended the young man. A rabbit. <laughs> nice. Ferocious beast. A rabbit. And the rabbit's name was Thul. And the sage said to him, I understand your trepidation, but this is an animal with great strength in its legs, and it will bound up. It will help you. This will be your companion. What was he going to do? He accepted the rabbit and went on his way. They traveled up to one of the highest peaks because there the young man had a plan. He thought, because, oh, because the sage also told him that he should create a shield and a lasso as part of this quest. And so the young man went and got the very fine fibers of the maguey plant and created this wonderful sh light shield. They went up to that mountain top and there were shooting stars. And he took out his lasso and twirled it and twirled it and threw it out and missed couldn't catch a star. Little comments. Nothing. He kept trying and trying. Finally, Thul, the rabbit, said, let me try. And so Thul got on his haunches. Yeah. Getting ready for that great big jump in the sky, and boom, he got up to that first star. And with the lasso, Thule then threw it down to the young man, pulled him up, and there they were, the two of them, <laughs> gathering stars that came across the sky. Scar stars that they bound into his maguey shield. Stars then that created a light, a light for his mother, a light in the shield that he could hold up and there could be the moon the light of the night. Now, Tul, after all this, <coughs> is getting a little restless. And he wants to play and jump and romp around and eat those little fresh green grasses just like he used to. He wanted that. And this aggravated the young man. This was serious business to bring about the moon. It really, you know what, him off. I have to be careful. So, the young man became very aggravated with his rabbit doodle, who had been his companion, and he grabbed him by his long ears and threatened him and said, Thul, I will throw you back into the darkest abyss. There, hanging by his ears, and Thul wiggled himself <laughs> around and looked at the young man and said, do you remember who first jumped on that star? 
Do you remember who lassoed you up? Do you remember who helped you create the shield of light that we now call the moon? The young man felt his remorse and gently released him. But he pressed him then into his shield. The rabbit became then part of the moon. And that's why we see the rabbit on the moon. We've got a full moon going. Look out tonight and you will see his long ears. Gracias. Mavis Salazar, let us in the blessing. Elena Claver and her wonderful parents. Angel Vigili and his story of Petzcatlipoca. John Romero and his flute. Elena Guerrero Townsend and her wonderful poetry. I am Jerry Lawson. Um, I've be, uh, been a part of Chalk for a very long time, and we're just going to leave it like that. I would also like to introduce you and give thanks to this artist collective that I am now a part of. We're seven women, and so you better be careful. It's all I'm saying. Arlette Lucero. Um, Rebecca Rosales. Angela Ramirez. Deb Scrapella that I just saw a minute ago. Deb, thank you. Megan Danza. And Esme Patino. We created these flowers that you see here for days and days and days. Thank you. And now, thank you, Chalk, the Chicano Humanities and Arts Council for providing us with space and beauty to be able to show our work. Thank you so much, Chalk, 
for surviving and getting to a point of thriving again. Thank you. He, Cal Duran, spent, yeah, spent, oh my God, helped us hang each of these flowers. Thank you, Cal. Cal also has been given a great notice on Westward as one of the leading artists of this city.